Hey everybody, how you doing today? It's Steve on the Guru Brew. This is a film processor and it's probably the biggest item that I've taken apart or tore down on the show and showed you how it worked. That's what I plan to do today. If you don't know what this machine is, that's fine. This comes from the 90s and this used to process photographic film. Also, dentists could use it for x-rays as well as graphic artists. But me, as a photographer, I used to use this to process my own film in-house. And that saves on the cost of having someone else do it. And I could carefully monitor my quality. It was important to me. So this is a small to mid-sized machine um, for people that want to process their own film. And it still works good today. And like I said, I plan on selling this. And so I wanted to show it off and show you how it works. So I'll give you a brief overview of how one might use this for processing negative film. And then we'll go ahead and open it up. There's a lot of valves and switches and tanks and hoses. This uses a lot of trades to make it work. And that's what makes it interesting. It even had a external liquid nitrogen tank that would pump the fluid through the system. And I'll show you that, as well as being plumbed into hot and cold water taps that was carefully monitored. All these systems for processing film were very critical on temperature, motion, and time. It was all very critical if you wanted quality. And that's what this machine did, is monitored and make sure that everything was proper. So let's get started with the Wing Lynch Model 5. I'll show you how it works real briefly and then we'll see how it works. Let's get started. Here's some examples of the kind of work that this machine would do. These are negatives of film that we used to process here at the shop. And we took this machine out of service quite a while ago, so this has been hanging around even though this machine is still used by some today. So we used to do like graduations and weddings and important events and that's why quality was important. It would also process these 35 millimeter rolls like just normal consumer grade. And it would process paper proofs as well, positive and it would do a couple of these at a time. The way that this machine worked is in complete darkness, you had to open one of these canisters using this machine here, or, and or, roll it up on these reels, okay? And then the reels would go inside this canister, and you could adjust the canister for one to eight rolls at a time. The canister would go inside this machine here, and once you close the lid on this, then you were able to turn on the regular light. But this was complete darkness. Not even a red light was allowed for this process. All right, so that takes care of that. Now let's go over to the machine and I'll show you how you might run that. So I should mention that this machine should be in a complete dark room. And that's exactly what we did. We had a specialty room built just to house this machine and it was completely dark. Now this machine was also hooked up to a water panel and here are some pictures of it here. This water panel would take hot and cold tap water from your building. It would filter it through these filters and then it would regulate the flow and set the temperature before sending it out. And then it would send it to this machine after all that was completed. When you process color film, I had mentioned before the time and temperatures are very critical, so the water would come in as an absolute given temperature. So once you have your film in your canister and you put it in this machine and you close the lid, then you can turn the lights on, but not until then. Now the way that this worked is this was also hooked up to a bottle of nitrogen and the nitrogen would pressurize the air lines that would pump the chemicals up to the trough. And all this was regulated here with the nitrogen. Over here this was the program that you were running. You could de 
develop different types of film and you could store programs for time and temperature that's what this is all about and this would monitor here your tank temperatures so you knew exactly what tank was how warm you know now you could configure these machines in different configurations this one is set up for color negative film and black and white old school film um, <clears throat> but you could change that so basically once the film was in this trough and covered up you could set your program that you wanted to run color negative film and start and it would do its thing just like a washing machine basically a chemical would come in and out at different times different chemicals and it would wash it and it would spin it and it was a very precise machine once the cycle was done it would beep at you and you could open this up and pull out your film and then hang it up to dry so between getting it in here and taking it out it was all automatic so let's flip it around here let's look at the tanks first and see how they work and then we'll look at the guts and see how the, it's got a lot of valves and stuff like that in there so we'll do that next so here on the front are the tanks and I have two banks of tanks. I have three on the top and two on the bottom. You can see by this metal plate, you can change things around to meet your own needs. The way I had it set up is these were color negative chemicals. There were three of them. And then on the bottom, it took a developer and fixer for old school black and white film. But again, you could set this up any way you wanted. You would use this control panel at the top to um, deliver whatever chemicals were necessary. So it looks pretty interesting back here. This is a manifold that goes to the front of the trough and you can see all these lines go down to the different chemical tanks. So these are the uh, inlet for the chemicals. This is a water line that goes up and also goes into the manifold, and this is that regulated one that comes off the water panel. Over here on this connection, this is for your nitrogen to pressurize the system. So how this worked is these solenoid valves here, there's five of them, and there's room for a whole lot more depending on how you have this hooked up. If it calls for, let's say, chemicals in this tank over here one of these valves will open up and push air into the top of the tank and it will push the chemical out of the tank into this tube and through the manifold so the computer would decide what solenoid was opened you know to let the air pressure go through and it's a lot better than a centrifugal pump especially when you're pumping mildly corrosive chemicals you tend to get gunked up pumps and stuff like that but with air pressure you don't have that problem so pretty good you know how this is all set up back there there's a uh, motor with a belt on it that actually turns and agitates the um, reels there's a connector on the front that connects to the tube that helps turn it it even has its own little battery backup right here a sealed acid battery and it's supposed to last the entire cycle so if your electricity were to go down this battery would finish the cycle for you and uh, I think that's all it's up in this area there is a uh, small CPU up here and it's labeled as um, solenoid valve heater trough and recovery system and all the plugs go into here like the battery and the 12 volt power supply so this is kind of your this would be the brain of the system right here is what it would be it's fused as well so yeah even though it's a simple concept there's a lot of parts to this Let's look in the next panel. Now we can start to see the back of the tanks. And these connections here are for the heaters. 
each one of the tanks has a uh, wire inside them that heats up to keep the chemicals at a certain temperature and there's also sensors on here now you can't quite see it but on top of these tanks there's these thick hoses like this and they go down into the chemicals so what happens is these little lines here also go to each tank and if it needs something out of this tank it'll send air pressure down the line push on the tank and then that'll cause the fluid to come up these lines the nice thing about that like I mentioned before you don't have a centrifugal pump you're just using air pressure to pump it out but these chemicals that are usually stored in here go bad quickly when there's in air in oxygen so by using liquid nitrogen to pump the fluid through it also puts a layer of protection on top of the tank and the lower it gets it takes up the airspace so your chemicals will last longer that was a big plus of using the nitrogen down here we have a pretty nice sized power supply and then there's a cover there I don't, I'm not sure what's behind that maybe we'll have to take a peek but yeah that's all it's really down here there's one more thing on the side it's called a recovery unit and uh, we'll get into that too so this bottom board looks like it takes care of the temperature of the tank and the top one takes care of the solenoid action you can see all these lines here running in those go to the temperature sensors as well as the heating elements inside the tanks so this is the board for the temperature and tank sensors while the above one is for solenoids looks pretty clean really I like it let's see what else we can see on this this thing on the side here was an add-on to the machine it didn't come stock with it it's called an SRS what it is it's a recovery unit for some of your chemicals see the way that this works is generally like the developer and other chemicals once it's used one time it goes down the drain it's not saved but in some processes like color film processing it uses a special bleach and it's fairly expensive and it's worth saving and reusing you can use it more than once so this was an add-on that would open a sat, uh, solenoid and allow you to put it into a bucket and save it through this hose instead of going down the drain and this thing right here is a probe and you have this bucket and you'd put this on the side of it and when it would come up to this level it would warn you that your buckets full and you have to replace it so that's what the recovery unit's all about saving money and we did we'd run the bleach through three or four times after it filled the bucket that way it was a lot cheaper to run this machine we should take this cover off and see what's behind here so there's more in there than I thought there would be there's a couple of those um, solenoid switches that are hooked up to air pressure it looks like and then there's a larger manifold of some type here this line would go to the waste you know down the drain and this would be the recovery that would go into the bucket you can see that my probe that I talked about for monitoring the level of the bucket goes up into this little circuit board pretty neat for its age there's a lot of useful parts on here you know even if you didn't use it for photo processing just these switches and solenoids alone are worth something I was just looking at the book and it looks like you can put many valves on for the recovery system here they've got three hooked up I've got the book for this and uh, it's pretty thorough actually I was just looking through here at some of these pictures and they show all these parts that I already went through like the dump valve the motor all the uh, they call these valves water valve 
That was a manifold. Yep, it's all here. Heater probes, transformer, car supply. The heater motherboard, we looked at that. Over here it shows the front of the unit. See how you can stack all these tanks in here. I don't have all these, but uh, you can. So that's it. That's the end of the era for a film processor built in the 90s. We took this out of service in 2005, I believe it was, and we went digital. You know, now you can just take a picture on a digital card, pop it in your computer, and bam, it's there. And before that, we had to go through making negatives, dealing with chemistry and mechanical things. And that was just to get the negative. I haven't even gone over how to get the print yet. But uh, yeah, it's fascinating. And I thought there was a lot of interesting parts in here to show you, so that's why I did this show. So I'm going to move this out and give it a new home. I'm selling it quite cheap, and I just wanted to do a last farewell to it and show you guys. So leave me your comments, let me know what you think, and give us a thumbs up if you like this. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.